Greetings YouTube, Mr. Sif here with Camper Killer Commentary number 10, and I'm about to challenge your preconceived notions about reality and the very universe around you. Now I know you think it's real, and I know you think it's three-dimensional, but what does science have to say about that? How about we take everything you believe and blow it the fuck up like, like a, a big, big white, white truck? truck. Now let's take a look at the standard scientific model of the universe. Everything, time, space, energy, and matter was created at one moment in time known as the Big Bang. Now you cannot ask what happened before the Big Bang, because time was created at that very moment, so there was no before the Big Bang. And you sure as hell can't say, well what in the universe made the universe, because everything in the universe was made at that moment. But Newton's laws of motion state that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, meaning that something has to cause something to happen. Fire doesn't happen without a spark, and smoke doesn't happen without fire. And a camper doesn't camp unless two single parents on drugs raise a pussy to play Modern Warfare 3. In other words, everything needs a catalyst for it to happen. So what made the universe explode if there was no time or space for that catalyst to exist within? This little conundrum is the reason why Einstein and the majority of his peers refuse to accept the Big Bang model, because it means something that transcends space, time, energy, and matter somehow created reality and the universe around you. Now think about that. Everything in your reality became a thing at a time when there was no things and there was no time. And although there's a small handful of theoretical physicists demanding this is possible due to the laws of quantum mechanics, there's a whole bunch of others who say, uh-uh, we got it wrong. Whoever you side with, it doesn't matter because science right now is testing to see if we live in a hologram. And what do I mean by a hologram? I mean that everything around you may not be three-dimensional. It might actually be a projection from the outside of space on a two-dimensional field outside your reality. And as crazy as that sounds, within science today, there's a lot of recent discoveries supporting that theory. So for a brief moment of time, let's put everything you believe aside and take a look at recent science. In 1982, a physicist known as Elaine Aspect out of the University of Paris discovers that certain particles can communicate with each other instantaneously regardless of the space between them. This directly goes against Einstein's law that information can't travel faster than light and suggests that space as we know it is an illusion. This leads David Bohm, one of the world's most critically acclaimed scientific minds in quantum mechanics, to say that reality doesn't exist at all. Moving forward to the 1990s, father of string theory and one of my biggest heroes, Leonard Susskind, working beside the Nobel Prize winner Gerald T. Hoof, both mathematically argue that our three-dimensional reality is really a two-dimensional projection from the outside rim of the universe. Susskind says that once we're able to look at one plank of a level of space, that we will be able to see a holographic hum or haze that will give evidence of a holographic reality. In January of 2009, the GEO 600, the world's most sensitive gravitational gravitational detector in the world discovers such noise, leading physicist Craig Hogan of Fermilab to say that this indeed supports the holographic principle. Moving on, 2012, April, Professor James Gates of the University of Maryland discovers within string theory and the foundations of reality a coded computer language invented in the 40s by a programmer known as Claude Shannon. 2012, October, Professor Silas Bean and his colleagues believe they find evidence for the framework or lattice that all reality hangs on by observing cosmic rays that enter our atmosphere. Whew, we're not even done. I mean, I know you just witnessed me drop a predator on that motherfucker getting us the victory and giving me a score of 22-2, but still, we haven't even touched Nick Bostrom's simulation argument. So let's just rewind all this and keep going. Is the universe real? Is reality real? I'm not sure how I feel. Can you help me, Mr. Sip, get a grip as I slip on the theoretical banana peel? Am I just a projection from a field of two dimensions, an invention like the wheel? How can I be sure I'm real? Nick Bostrom, the super cool professor from Oxford University and award-winning philosopher, argues that there is a high probability that we exist within a computer simulation. He presents this argument in his 2003 paper, The Simulation Argument. Within this argument, he allows an equal probability to three possibilities. Possibility number one, all species within the universe that achieve technological maturity end up destroying themselves before they could make simulations of the universe. Possibility number two, all species within the universe that are able to create simulations of the universe for some reason or another decide not to. And of course, possibility number three, 
you more than likely, without a doubt, live within a computer simulation. What he's trying to argue is, if there is at least one planet in the entire universe technologically advanced enough to make a video game as complex as the universe, which there probably is, you are probably in one of these video games. And I could hear you now. Mr. Sith, how does that even make sense? Well, it's these two little things called logic and math. And before you start to laugh, why don't we try to grasp the logical path of that math? First, let's look at the fact that most computer engineers believe that we're pretty close to making such simulations ourselves. Some say it'll be achieved in the next 10 years. Some say it'll be done in the next 500. Any way you look at it, that's a small drop of time in a big fucking bucket of time. Nothing more than a cosmological blink of an eye. Now consider how many species out there are 1,000 to 1 million to 1 billion years more advanced than we are technologically. And now ask yourself, how many individual simulations are they creating? To better understand this question, let's use Modern Warfare 3 as an example. Within the first 24 hours of Modern Warfare's release, it sold 6.5 million copies in America alone. That's one simulation on one planet within one day. Now remove yourself from this planet and start thinking universally. How many simulations exist in this universe right now advanced enough to be confused with reality by the players within it? If there is life in outer space more advanced than we are, then you are possibly looking at hundreds of trillions of trillions of trillions of trillions of trillions of simulations. And that is highly likely. In fact, Nick Bostrom argues the only way to counteract the mathematical probability of this actually happening is saying that anybody who is technologically advanced to make these simulations decides not to or dies before they can. But if just one species on one planet in our entire universe is technologically advanced enough to make these simulations, chances are you're in one right now. Just do the math yourself. A hundred trillion simulations out in the middle of the universe, what's the chance you're in the real universe? Back to Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 3 has reportedly sold more than 20 million copies. If it was advanced enough to be confused with real reality, you would have a 1 in 20 million chance of being in the real universe. So in other words, if there are trillions of programmed realities in our universe right now, well then you have almost a zero chance of being in a real universe, and a very likely chance of being in a simulated reality. Hey, don't blame me. I didn't program the universe. I'm just fucking killing campers in it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.